time. It is history time. get this uh, picture here or pretty solid one right now uh, okay this will do this will do let's start here okay so history time today history time today this must be a different language I don't know what this language is. We're gonna we're gonna look at it together. Green display camera. Wow! There we go. So our conversation today is going to be about Patagon. And let me also pop that up. Okay. So. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, in the beginning portions of, uh, I'm sorry, in the ending portions of our last history time, we talked about Leon Castile. We talked about Alfonso the Sixth, his subsequent son Alfonso the Second, and then we also talked about uh, Portugal and, and the creation of Portugal over here on the left side of the Iberian Peninsula. So we've talked about a good portion of the lands of Spain, right? We've talked about uh, this kingdom of Pamplona with Navarre. Uh, we've talked about Leon Castile and everything of the sort. But Aragon is another really important port. Whoa, look at this little guy. Is another really important uh, portion of the narrative of the Reconquista because it is the easternmost kingdom that goes to comprise a huge amount of land in what eventually becomes the crown of Aragon. So we need to bring our, our story back to 1035 or so with Sancho the Second, the king of Pamplona or what becomes the kingdom of Navarre. Now remember he had three sons when he passed away and it kind of created that chronicle of three sons bequeathing territory and uh, I'm sorry a ruler bequeathing territory unto three sons unto three sons so on and so forth. This is what gets us in the current timeline of what we have with um the uh the Jimena dynasty with the um Sancho, Alfonso and their brother in, in Galicia. Just like not as cool. But <laughs> with Aragon, we have something pretty interesting. So, uh Garcia the 3rd, which is Sancho the 2nd's son, gets Navarre. Ferdinand the First, Ferdinand the Great, gets Castile, but then his illegitimate bastard son gets Aragon, and Aragon at the time is a very small little kind of. It's almost more like a, um, I don't want to say a suburb, but it's a small little portion of land at the foothills of the Pyrenees. It's not. It's not a significant amount of land, and the. The, 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 the son that gets that is Ramiro the first and he goes on to kind of create this grand legacy for Aragon because Aragon is smashed between uh, Zaragoza on the south Navarre on the west and Barcelona on the right or what uh, what we will kind of refer back and forth to Barcelona or um, uh, Catalonia whichever one I'm gonna say at the time but they're kind of interchangeable. The difference between Barcelona and Catalonia is depending upon which historical time frame you're talking about. From what I understand, at the time it would have been called Barcelona, but now as just a, a, a common political correctedness, it's called Catalonia. And I, someone in chat that knows this better than me can absolutely correct me on that if need be. So, in fact, this is a pretty good picture. This is a pretty good one as well. This kind of d illustrates how small Aragon is by comparison to Navarre, Castile, uh, and Zaragoza, and Barcelona around it. So, yo, this is a Hungarian map. Thank you, Corvin. I was like, what is this language? <laughs> um, 
<laughs> they speaking in tongues here. So, and Catalonians are their own culture. Yes, in this game especially. Um, but at 1035, you have a, a massive southern, eastern, and western expansion. Aragon kind of creates its own territory and pushes itself out of its initial borders into not just um, Almoravid land, but into, or, or Muslim land, but into Christian land as well. It carves its own nation out, which is really, really interesting here because um, a lot of Castile, Leon, and Navarre is, yes, it's warring between each other, but also at the same time, it's intermarrying to create the situations that weave these new boundaries and these new borders. But with Aragon, it's a lot of outward aggression. And Ramiro goes and pushes his border further and further south, east, and west. And he has sons who then have other sons. And <clears throat> you come up to a very important figure in the history of Aragon, which is Alfonso I, El Bateador, or the Battler. Sometimes just known as Alfonso the Battler. And Alfonso I is the brother of Peter I. Peter I is the king at the time, and they push southward into uh, Huesca and take Huesca. And that becomes the, the capital of Aragon. And, and Alfonso the Battler is this pretty interesting character who he went to a monastery to learn how to become, you know, learned. And in doing so, he became infatuated with... Uh, military strategy and campaigns and with the Crusades because this is a, a pretty important time in history because 1096 is right around the time that we get the Crusades. So in 1096 when they take Huesca, uh, you get Alfonso the Battler that is leading a portion of that army and taking this and kind of recreating what he has been learning this entire time in the, in the monastery. And it's interesting, too, because we think about the Crusades and we think about. Where do I have that number? Why do I have that number over there? Ah, yes, that's right. Um, we think about the Crusades and we think about um, the Holy Land, right? We think about the Pope saying, yo, I want you guys to go retake the Holy Land and I'm going to give you uh, um, a penance for all of your sins. All of you knights that, that have done wrongdoings in your life, which was a lot. You can go to the Holy Land and everyone can be absolved of it. Peasant to king. Everyone. And we think of the real first time of that happening <clears throat> in around... Let me get some water here. Hold on, guys. Ooh. We think of the first time of that actually happening in the First Crusade. But it's not true. The, the, the very first precedent of a pope kind of sanctioning a military action is actually in 1064. And that's when the Pope sanctions, Alexander II sanctions a military action to take back, it's called Barbastro. Let me see if I can actually, it's not on this map. I don't think it's on any of my maps I have got up right now. Do, 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 do. <clears throat> It's not on any of these maps, unfortunately. It's like, so if, uh, you know what, actually might be here on Crusader Kings. It's right, yeah, here we go, the city of Barbastro. They go and they take it out and they say, it's it's like a multiple, multi-month long siege, but the, the call to arms is any Western knight that goes to do this will get penance for their sins. So Alexander II kind of creates the proto-crusade in the city of Barbastro. And so you get Alfonso the Battler who learns about stuff like this, who learns about the crusades, who learns about all these military actions. And all, remember, Alfonso the Battler is, yes, they did, Oliver, uh, is also a part of, remember when we talked about Valencia with... Um, with El Cid and how El Cid ruled over Valencia and had a very important battle against the Almoravids in 1094, while well, Alfonso the Battler was right alongside him in 1094. Two years later, they take out Huesca, and that becomes the new capital of Aragon. Uh, Aragon. <clears throat> Excuse me. But what unfortunately happens is, a series of events, Peter I dies. Then the Peter the I, Peter the First's wife and daughter die. And an interesting thing about this is that Peter the First's daughter was actually El Cid's. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. 
Peter the First's son dies, and Peter the First's son is bequeathed to El Cid's daughter. So they were bringing the El Cid into the bloodline. You know, he was going to become royalty. <laughs> Unfortunately, though, because every single person, every claimant to the throne of Aragon, ends up passing away in 1101, 1102, 1103, it eventually falls upon. Um, uh, Alfonso the first and in 1104 Alfonso the first becomes the king of Aragon I'm not saying Aragorn but I'm saying Aragon um from brother Peter Peter's son Elsa daughter Alfonso aha yes but we've already talked about the scheming he's unfortunately dead but the is scheming open the dynasty tree brother of mine Alfonso now, Alfonso VI, we know him to be this great schemer and, and all sorts of crazy things. Did he actually have a son? No, he didn't. Um, he had a daughter, a daughter named Yoraka. And Yoraka and Alfonso are married together. And the point of this is that... Um, Arahi? Arahu! <laughs> um, the, the, the point of this is that he wants to pretty much use his guile, use his, his intrigue score, which is in mass of 32 plus. Uh, <laughs> plenty of hostile scheme bonuses for him in real life. Um, he uses this to pretty much marry into the crown of Aragon. Oh, we talk about all this in, in Crusader Kings 3, right? About marrying into all these situations and to having all these situations with succession. It's the reason the game's like that is because the real real world was like that. Well, if I don't, I don't need to go uh, physically, militarily take over Aragon. I'll just marry into it and subjugate it through power, uh, through through basically just the marriage and and my crown above his. And that's what tried to happen. Um, Yoraka and Alfonso just keep butting heads, just slamming into each other nonstop. So much so that. They fight each other in a siege and two open field battles and Alfonso the Battler wins all of it. And eventually they just kind of say, listen, let's just part ways. Let you, you keep your territory, I'll keep mine. Let's just end this marriage and be done with it. Excuse me. <laughs> I had apples and they just come right back at me. <laughs> so it does. That's what happens. It all just ends. And... After that point, Alfonso is pretty much clear to go weapons hot on the rest of the Taifa of Saragoza, and he does so. He pretty much pushes southward against the Urbo River Valley, and let's say it's right over here is so that Urbo River Valley is, and I know I'm mispronouncing that. Um, let me see here. It's kind of a little bit better on this map, but... Let me jump into the game. The game might give us a better uh, indication of... Well, that's not the game. This is. Of those these territories around here. Because in doing so... Sometimes the game, like, if you, like, come into it... Yeah, there we go. So let's go to Kingdom Map. Aragon does eventually get over there, and we're going to talk about that. But I think this is the Arbo River Valley. Where is, where is uh, Zaragoza? Zaragoza is right here. So, yeah. So, yeah, this is perfect. This is perfect. So, this river right here is the Urbo River Valley. It extends all the way out. And he pushes westward into these locations. He push, pushes eastward. And he pushes southward to everywhere around Zaragoza. And in 1117, he gets sanctioned by... Glacius II, Pope Glacius II, to hold his own crusade, something he has always wanted to do, pretty much, and rides southward out of Huesca into Zaragoza and takes out this Taifa state. Now, what's important about this is that Zaragoza actually falls in 1118, so it takes about a year or so to get Zaragoza. But in doing so, let me jump back onto uh, this, this map here. We have something pretty important. So, in 1185, Toledo is captured by Alfonso VI. We talked about that two episodes ago in our history lessons. Then, in 1118, Zaragoza falls. And then, in 1147, Lisbon falls. And, or Lisboa at the time. So, you, you, you really got to take a, a 
a kind of measure of what happens pretty much from 1085 to 1147 is the central powerhouse of the Almoravids starts to fracture. In less than 100 years, you have a pretty clear line drawn across this, all the way up to Zaragoza, of Christian kingdoms. Even this whole entire territory gets gobbled up down to Valencia. And for the most part, in 1147, the Almoravids begin to fracture in northern Africa, and this gives rise to the Almohad, which we'll talk about in our next one. But um, this is important because the Christian kingdoms have now started to push out everything. They're pushing now against um, all the type of states. Toledo and Lisbon have been captured, and Zaragoza is secured. So for the most part, the main uh, producing portions, it's now down to uh, Cordoba, or Cordoba, Granada and uh, Sabia. That's it's not Seville, as some people call it. It's like Sabia. I mispronounced it. I'm sorry. But that's pretty much the last bastions, as it were. And even then, though, you you get aggression out from Alfonso the Seventh, which is Alfonso the Sixth son, into these these locations in Sabia, all the way down to Almeria, which kind of kind of shakes Muslims to the core of that are in Al Andalus still because now they're ranging all the way down to the southern coast which they have not been able to do since the Portugal established this region over here for itself and in doing so you get uh, the Christian kingdoms really able to rally around and kind of create a very strong um, figurehead and let's this is pretty much what, what, we're, what we will what it will eventually become um, but the Alfonso the First, Alfonso the Battler, ends up dying, and we've talked about this before. But he dies at the Battle of or the Siege of Fraga in 1134, and essentially, Alfonso the First leaves this really amazing legacy behind. Because after he took Zaragoza, he starts pushing westward, southward, and eastward even further, more so, and wins at the Battle of Cutanda, and even pushing all to the border of Barcelona in 1120. So he's trying to kind of use the momentum of the crusade to push south and further and further and further. And upon dying, uh, he, remember, he shot through the eye at the siege by just a, a random um, uh, Muslim soldier. And no one of any of any note of any sort of anything like that. And he actually leaves his, his kingdom to the crusaders. He says, you know, uh, I wish that my kingdom were, were to be uh, disseminated upon those who would continue the crusade to reconquer Spain. And the ruling class of Aragon did not have this. They were like, <laughs> idealistic, but cute. That's not going to happen. So the crown passes to his brother, Ramiro II, Ramiro the monk. And Ramiro decides to consolidate power of Aragon rather than expanding the power of Aragon. And in doing so, he marries into Barcelona, Barcelona, if you want to say it with a Castilian accent. And this is what creates the crown of Aragon, the, the state of the crown of Aragon, which doesn't really get really sanctified until 1162. And here's a pretty good map here that shows Valencia. And it shows Valencia over here, Aragon up here, and Barcelona over here. And the crown of Aragon goes on further and further and further and extends and there's an, a, there was a better map I had. Here we go, this cool one. This map kind of shows you the extent of the crown of Aragon and where it will eventually become in this look, this is the Aragonese Empire in 11 and 1443. So it does become a much larger and bigger thing and at its height I think uh, this map, this one kind of shows us this at its height shows us, you know, it's got Valencia, Sicily, Majorca, uh, I think it's Majorca, uh, Aragon, Naples, Jerusalem, Sardinia, Corsica. Uh, you can see the kingdoms, the duchies, the lordships, the protectorates. So it's got such a massive umbrella that it eventually encompasses in the later portions of its history before it gets united under the um, universal Spanish crown, I think, in uh, 1490 something. Um, but we don't really talk about stuff like that, right? Uh, when you kind of think of the history of Spain, we think of stuff like Portugal. We think of stuff like Leon Castile. Uh, the Crown of Aragon is such a huge portion of not just Spanish history, but of the history of Italy, the history of Greece, the history of, of, of uh, Crusades. And a lot of the Reconquista, it, it's so, it has so many different stages to it, right? It eventually is... or 
it started out as a war to persist, to stay alive, right? The Visigothic Empire falls. Um, all that's left is this little portion in Al-Andalus. I'm sorry, in... Um, what's it called? I My brain. What's up here? What is over here? What is this? What is this? Asturias. Up in Asturias. And it eventually grows to become this thing that says, hey, let's carve out a little land for ourselves. Hey, let's consolidate this power and keep it for ourselves. Hey, let's expand the power. Let's push this out. We own this. It becomes these multiple stages. And the Reconquista is not just simply the simple war of aggression. It's a, a back and forth ping ponging across history that lasts hundreds of years, right? Remember, this started in the 800s, and it's not going to conclude until the late 1400s, beginning of the 1500s. Well, that's not true. It, it, it ends at the end of the 1400s, not the beginning of the 1500s. But you have to understand that this is almost an 800 year conflict. And it expand, it, it, it influences so many spheres of influence within the medieval world because Lisbon isn't taken by Portuguese soldiers. It's taken by crusading knights that were promised loot by the Portuguese. This over here, Almeria, wasn't just taken by Alfonso VII. It was taken by Genoese soldiers as well as Alfonso the VII. Uh, even the history of Aragon is riddled with crusader knights coming in from the west. And you have these knights that span all across Hispania, that span all across the crusader kingdoms. When we talk about uh, the Knights of Toledo, which are an important knight, uh, what's it called? Uh, uh, order, the, the Knights of Santiago, which are two Spanish-based orders. Like, there are so many... Um, ways that the Reconquista influences the rest of Christendom and the Western European world that we just don't really ever look at. So you can see now how the Reconquista is very important. But that concludes our history lesson for today. Uh, our next time we'll be talking about the Almohad and their kind of consolidating of power of the fractured Almoravid state. Uh, Almoravids kind of fall apart over here at uh, Marrakesh and they take over what was the Almoravids and continue to keep a, a strong foothold in uh, um, Hispania for a time. In fact, this is kind of interesting because this is, this is Granada, right? And at, towards the end of the Reconquista, all that's left of Muslim state is Granada. So this is actually kind of interestingly um, reminiscent of the way that kind of historically proceeds. Uh, of course, it's fractured in multiple kingdoms, but I am the emperor of Spain and I shan't have that. So that is our history lesson for today. We got a new member. It's Rutger Smets. What's up, dude? Oh, Des, que bonita. Oh. What is the process for a nation to be sanctified? Uh, by the Pope, I believe. Basically, a nation creates a crown or a title, and the Pope sanctifies the title. Is the leader of the Almoravids correct? I don't I don't remember who it starts off as. Uh, and the leader of the Almoravids... Um, What's interesting about the Reconquista and what's interesting about Christianity and <clears throat> Islam, and I'm, I'm, I don't want to get into a religious debate here because I'm not trying to go down that road, but they're both obviously Abrahamic religions, right? They're, they're uh, the, the religions of Abraham, and they have similar roots. And their initial aggression bec between Christianity, Islam, and Judaism spans back further back than this obviously but stuff like this ramps up what we would call fervor in the game and what happens in the reconquista was not a first the reconquista was not originally a, a, a religious movement right just like the almoravids taking over all of al andalus well not almoravids um the umayyad taking over all of al andalus was not a religious movement it became religious and what becomes of the of the stacking religious stakes of all of these conflicts is that it becomes more and more puritan in its religious approach the christians of the of hispania of of the reconquista create more and more of a um religious backdrop to the reconquista as such the almoravids which are again a little bit more of a Puritan or zealous 
approach to Islam wipe out the Umayyad and wipe out what's all on the all on the loose for pursuit of a more pure or more zealous uh, Islamic approach. And it's a constant one upping and stacking that starts way back before even the the first crusade. And that's something that just kind of gets replicated throughout medieval history is this constant need to kind of tip the odds in the favor of one religion over the other. Yeah, I think we might do two more episodes of this throughout next week because I don't want to... I'll start another one on a on a weekend. I don't like to start it on the... On the uh, I'm Roman Catholic. I was born and raised Roman Catholic. But I also went to... I went to schools where I learned about Islam, Judaism, Catholicism, Christianity. And I have a lot of friends that are Christian and they're like, Catholicism, what's that like? Is that, I, I, don't, I don't get it. I'm like, you understand that. You understand that Catholicism is a denomination of Christianity, right? Are, are we, are, did you not learn that? Uh, how did you not learn that and you call yourself a Christian? Like, it's very weird to see that there, how connected a lot of religions are, but how disconnected the people that practice them are. But I had to learn about Buddhism, Hindu. It was it created a lot of appreciation about, and that's why I like history so much, right? You like history, and as a result of liking history, you can understand the relationship between uh, every single culture in the world. And if you understand all the religions, especially the, the more prominent ones, you understand how they're all connected and why they're all called Abrahamic religions. So it's it's really important to kind of dive into that for yourself. If you find yourself in a position where you believe one thing in totality, you need to kind of unearth it and, and, and decide what are the things that link and create that. Well, no, there, there is obviously distinctions between Catholicism and Christianity, but um, I had a roommate at the time who treated it like a separate religion. And yes, the, the base tenets are different. Catholicism believes a certain thing about Christ that Christianity does not believe. So... Yes, obviously. It's the same way that um, Jesuits or Lutherans believe, so on and so forth. The Buzzing Knight, I am not a history teacher. We'll go into Barcelona. All right, it is now time to play. Let us game it up. Let me swap some stuff here. Play capture off. And let me shut all this down. That's unneeded Chrome resources that are going to just suck my computer dry. Okay. What are we? Oh, man, we're 37 minutes in. Sorry, guys. That was a lot. That was a longer history lesson than I thought it would be. <clears throat> we all know at the end of the day, the best religion in the world is, spaghetti mo is the spaghetti monster. No, I didn't decide on the new game. Aerodon, we'll wait a little bit. I'll probably do that that throughout the next week. So, let's take a look here. We got some stuff to do. We're first in line to this duchy, okay. Yeah, man, if you die, bro, that's all mine. What's up, Josh? Oh, I almost threw up my... I, I threw up. Yo, why are you doing this nine-man army of death here? What's this for? Commanded by ruler? Fine. Fine. The count doesn't like me. I would... I, you know... Part of me really does want to do the Seljuk Empire and create the Sultanate of Rum. Of Rum? Of Rum? <laughs> of Rum? Of Rum? Um, part of me wants to really do like an Eastern... Like a Northeastern tribe. And do something that kind of has to do with the Mongols. Because I love... Turkish, Mongolian, and um, Hunnic history. And I know they're all very different, but I love these kind of Eastern Steppe tribe histories. I, I know a lot about them, or a good amount about them. I also know a shit ton about Kiev and Rus, and R Ruthenia is a really, 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 really uh, appeasing one for me. Also, what's his name? The Stranger over here is really cool, too. Why is the room gone? I actually don't know very much about Indian history, period. Unfortunately, too, because Indus, uh, India's dynastic history is super interesting. It's really, really, really interesting. 
um, because they have a really proud, really amazing military history through their dynastic um, history, I guess. Uh, like the three or four prime dynasties that kind of make up India. And it's really, really kind of, it's a, it's a shame that it's not focused on enough in Western history. About Turkish Ottomans. I mean, yeah, Faust, I, I know a good chunk about that. That was the question or, or were you suggesting campaign? All right. I need to get a sagua. My throat is dry today. <clears throat> Hey guys, check my name out. What's next to my name? It's a check mark. Guys, make sure you are liking the stream. We got about 150 of you bros checking in. Only about 44 likes right now. I need you guys to turn it blue. I need to see that thumb turned up into a little blue thumb. Is it the white thumb right now? It's not right. It needs to be a blue thumb. Make that thumb blue. As a jack mark. Okay, so we can create some kingdoms, we can create some duchies. Yeah, I think it's doesn't it start out as oh it starts off as like a gray, doesn't it? I, I have it on dark mode, so it's like a gray that turns to a blue. I'm good, Antoine, how are you? Sorry, Josh. What about Serbia? They become the biggest nation on Balkans at some point, about 1300. I'm open to it. I, I mean, I'm not... Uh, there's no one thing I won't do. Like, I'll, I'll pretty much... I'll suck anything twice. Let's take out Badajoz over here, I think. Can declare war on the king? Oh, that's right. Dude, I love the change new eye. It looks so good. Like I love this down here, the the way that uh, like every like even just jumping into the innovations, into the battle screens, how these have a little bit of like a black outline around them, kind of make them pop a little bit more. I, I love the new change to uh, UI. Military's got that cool little backdrop up there. Aradam, I know you want me to do a Harold Hadrada. I'll put up a poll. We'll, we'll kind of we'll figure it out together as a team. Okay, so let's take a look. Let's pause for a sec and regroup here. So, my health is ailing. The, uh, I, it's been ailing for two or three years. So, I'm kind of, sorry, um, I'm kind of probably on my way out, more or less. And that's good, because we do want my son to take over. He is 22. I can commit suicide, but I don't want to do that. Whoa, what the, What this? Write the thoughts down. You'll lose some stress. Bring me my journal. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, we got to really set the, the foundations here for... Um... That thing. Succession. Do we have it? Do we have enough? Nope. Oh, okay, so we can actually unlock. We have enough to do this. Converging a chance of reinforcing congenital traits. I mean, honestly, I think going down blood is pretty strong. Resilient bloodline I'm not as crazy about. Popular opinion plus five, prowess, and knightly effectiveness. Prowess. Prowess, right? It's prowess. I unlearned it. I swear to God. What's up, Magic? How are you? Vibrant court. Courtier and guest opinion plus ten. Better guests will be attracted. Ooh. Desirable match. Marriage acceptance plus thirty. So... What's important to know about this? 
It says marriage acceptance plus 30. So if I were to click, let me see. Um, arrange this marriage. Oh man. Uh, I don't think there's anyone I can do this to to show off. Find a spouse, find a spouse. So this button will own, so when you click find a spouse, it will only show you what you have a chance to succeeding in. It's not going to show you anyone that you do not have a chance to succeed in. So by getting this, it will actually expand your marriage options and you will see people in the marriage options that you did not see before. So that's why that one is important. So if someone's at a negative one chance to be married, they won't appear in that list. Kin fertility plus 10%. Bounteous loins. Raziel, show me your bounteous loins. Correct, just for your dynasty. Just for your dynasty, yes. Thank you, Siyoshi. How you doing, dude? So do we uh, hang out here for Convergent Blood? Also true, Afrit. Uh, Afrit. Afrit Mustafa said, it also makes it, it makes the AI more inclined to accept matrilineal for your daughters. Because remember, they now have 30 uh, increased to marriage acceptance. Um, I think we hold out for Convergent Blood. And once we get there, we can probably jump into another line. No problem. I appreciate you jumping in and saying hi, though. So yeah, we'll hang out for a little bit in this for now. And we'll jump up another legacy. I wanted to look at that earlier, though. Six houses? That is a sick-looking house. Hey, guys, make sure you're hitting that like button. We just have to expand our members. We do not have a lot of members of our house. We're making a lot of renown, which is good. And it's nice that I'm an emperor. Um, so, but having more member, living members is going to be huge for us. And right now, hopefully he can just start pumping out kids and she's a queen. So this is kind of crazy. This is so nuts. <laughs> I can't believe that. I can't believe my sister, my my daughter-in-law is now the king of Lotharingia. Yeah, hundred percent. We're I, we did. This is a really good one. This guy is now going to become the uh, Duke of Valencia. I think that's what our our key is there. We'll unpause here. Let that get to two fifty. And we could go do the crusade, but I just don't really see a point in doing so. Let me take a look. How is the crusade even going? It's overwhelmingly in our favor. So I could send someone down there. And just, I could send someone down there and just start taking out some of this stuff. I could have my son lead it. Yeah, I agree with you, Afrit. But let's create, because we need to have some stronger dukes. This guy likes us. That. Duke Nuno's in good graces. Pierre Duke Rodrigo. <laughs> El Cid, you're so scarred! <laughs> no! Duke Fernando, he's all beat up, dude. How did you get so beat up, bro? King 
King Fernando Sanchez of, Loth of Lotharingia. That's interesting. I guess because she's the queen. Um. Yeah, everyone else seems to be pretty strong, pretty good right now with me. But it's because I also have 36 Dread. I just want to strip this guy of his titles. Uh, El Cid? El Cid just got, like, beat up on his own. Wacko, good to hear that, dude. Hopefully he helped you out. Yeah, I guess that's a good point. Uh, so, what you're saying is we should wait for our son to create the Ducal title and have him um, give it. Do you have a guide on dealing with giving titles to vassals? Scott, I do not, but it looks like everyone wants that to be the next one. My primary spouse? Yeah, she's unlanded. Uh, and this one was unlanded. But she became landed. Like, it's kind of a, a pretty crazy twist of events that made her the... Queen. Okay, so... I think now we take this time to... just knock out these little bits of... of land left. Oh, uh, level of fame is also important. I mean, because our level of fame is up there. Good call after you... This is, should be good. This is established. That's the second one. He's not doing terrible. So, I think we just knock out Badajoz and Alcaniz and just take this stuff back. These are only county-wide wars, so it should be quick and easy. Oh, can I not do this? Do I have any... No, I want this. So I can't do that until when? 11.03? Yeah, so let's do a lot of managing right now. We probably have the twilight years of, of Emperor Sancho, the father of Spain, of Hispania himself, before he passes on. Let's at least take this out. He won't even allow me to vassalize him. Holy War for the county. Let's just wipe him out and just gobble it up. You pledged in a great Holy War against... Oh... Interesting. So you can't be a part of multiple holy wars. When it starts, this war will end inconclusively. Don't worry about it. It doesn't work. So just attack anyway, you're saying? What's up, Richard? So, we'll see how it goes.
Oh, you have? You dirty bitch. Eleven thousand will do. Oh, that was one. Aha, the, court, the culture in Cordoba changes to Castilian. Ah, perfect. Tsuyoshi dropping 665 Canadian saying, I gotta head out, thanks for streaming. Well, thank you very much, man. Have a good one, dude, and thanks for dropping in. Always good to see you. Stay safe out there, brother. What's up, Alaric? How are you doing? I've never broken a truce. Like, how, what, how does that affect you? We have so many, like, courtiers here, man. Waldenism. Get out of here with that. Whoa. Harold God Haroldson Godwin? Dude, this guy is the former king of England. Wasn't he or something? Relationships. He must have some sort of, like, tie to a crown. Yeah, Godwin. That's so cool. So I can bring that guy in, and... Hispania could expand up to Spain or up to England. That is so cool. Crepe branch de Fuentes. De Fuentes, sorry. So could debt branches take away from my renown gain? I can't remember. Cadet branches still count as living members of the parent branch, but they but a cadet branch has its own living members, right? Nice. No. Where's that? I'm not sure uh, the M beats. Oh, look at this little army. Neutral. Neutral. You'll give me 10 gold for this? For this, for this child? A bleeder. Okay. He's dealing with a bit of an uprising up here, though. Peasant uprising, huh?
Okay, accept the thing. Ransom, please. Thank you. What is up, Hugh Gadney? This guy going. Oh. oh! Ah! Ah! I have died. It actually scared the shit out of me. Okay, all right, all right. We got a lot to do right now. Life just got hard. <laughs> Emperor Sancho of Espana rests in the arms of the Lord at 64 years of age. He died of old age, known to be respected by scholar. Known to be a respected scholar, he spent most of his days studying in his library, rarely leaving his castle. Emperor Fernando ascends to the throne. A pious and humble man, many fear that Fernando may have been better suited for a church rather than the throne. Oh, we'll get fucked. We're gonna change that right now. What's up, Cat Leo? Oh, wow. Why did he become? Do Fernando became the new dynasty head of the... Why? That doesn't make any sense. Okay. Yeah, he's craving. But he's athletic. <laughs> so we got some stuff we gotta do. Not endorsed by my patriarch, huh? My patriarch's kind of shitty, so... How many counties does he have? One, two, three. I mean, but I'm an emperor. I've got one, two, three, four counties. One, two, three duchies. One, two kingdoms. This created the Kingdom of Aragon. And the Duchy of Toledo. And the Duchy of Garcia. Oh, these... The, this created a lot. Okay, so we got too many. We got a lot of this stuff, so we gotta fix it up. Okay, not endorsed. Okay, who who needs opinion? Increasing, everyone. So let's first off let's let's fix up our court. That'll be the first thing we're gonna do right now. All right, Hugh, have a good one, dude. Oh, I haven't... I, I don't know why I haven't... Maybe I haven't assumed it yet because I just took the titles. And I, I will assume it uh, quickly. So... We can have... We can... We'll sway him. That'll be our first start. No available spouses because my spouse is a fucking queen. Let's do this. account this guy's badass I, I can't really pass this up and the reason the dukes weren't on the council to begin with is because they had shit stats Spymaster. 
Duke Nuno, I think. Duke Rodrigo, you served my father. You shall serve me. <sighs> well, I can put Duke Nuno on here. This will bring it to a negative 60. It is scary, though, having him in this position. Because Duke Nuno... Duke Nuno is about to die. He's also poor and ailing. His primary heir could use guardianship. Because this is Duke Nuno's primary heir. Yeah. They're the rivals here. And this is his primary heir. Who's his heir? Alfonso, huh? That's his, that's his ward, too. Duke Fernando, though, is fine enough, I suppose. But... I think influencing Duke Nuno's heir is good. So we'll do this. This will at least give him... Uh, we can start influencing him to create a strong Duke. And that's, I think, important. That, that'll be... Because this guy's, guy's going to be going downhill any minute now. So we'll get this going. She doesn't want to see it on the council. Putting on the counter sh council should help out. I mean, she's. I'm just roared about somebody at negative 69 and putting him on the council. She's doing domestic. We could continue this. This might help out with, with kind of converting the rest of our lands. Yeah, we'll go scholarship focus for a little bit longer. Then pivot that, though, because we need to probably boost up something else. Um, all right, Ronnie, have a good one, dude. Thank you for jumping in. Also, when I drop below my holdings, that'll kind of be fixed a little bit. You, my nemesis, got my back. <laughs> this will help. Anyone have a good opinion of me? No, didn't think so. Ball sack here. Fernando, I don't like that he's vengeful though. Might just give it to this guy. Thank you, Gojo. If someone does, dude. Trusting, humble, and impatient. This is this could be good. We'll give it to this guy, I think. Radulf. 
I mean, yeah, he is Catalan, but that's okay. Catalonian. Can I take a county without war? Yes, Thanos, you can offer vassalization. Give one of the duchies to someone with good intrigue and make her hit. Ooh. Good call. We also have to find that too. God damn. We have money, which is good, so we can make some titles, but we already have titles that were created for us by some fucking act of God. So, for, for one, let's take a look at this. So, we need to find a physician. Terrible skill. This one's pretty solid. Oh, man. She's blind, too. It kind of makes it a little bit cooler, you know? Like, oh, woo, spooky fucking blind physician over here who's going to, like, cut me open. That's 54. <laughs> so. What is my thought process for granting titles? I'm trying to do it to people that are going to be trusting, content, calm, uh, humble, stuff where they don't want to scheme. She's she's a pretty she's a very solid one with very high skill. Renowned Okay, so no no renowned physicians. Who's Craven? Yeah, never ambitious. Patient, brave, and chaste. I think we could probably give it to her. I could give it to my wife. Oh god. Do I want to This looks This looks terrifying. Maybe I just give it to her. Shy, craven and cynical. <laughs> <clears throat> Or we search. We'll search and see what we get. If we get anything good, we can go with that. This takes like two seconds to do anyway. Uh, I think hosting a feast is a really good start here too. Oh shit, it'll cost us as much to make a title. That's stupid. So, Liege holds de jure duchy. Which one is that? I hold no duchies of yours. Right, authority, too many duchies. We'll get, we'll get that not rightful liege. We'll get that kind of squared up. The goal was to land, was to give this guy a title, was to give him the Duchy of Valencia. Oh, you're right. Why did I, I when I heard Duchy, my brain, my brain heard Count. Um, I don't think making this guy the Duke of this location is bad. He's been groomed for it. Yeah, I know, Chris. I know, Chris. Definitely know that. It sucks that I'm craven, but it is what it is. Um, but if I give him the Duchy of Aragon, that will immediately clear up um, 30 relations. So he'll be at negative 20. And then that's just short reign after that. And then if we do... So I think you're ending this guy. So here's my plan. We'll get this guy the the Duchy of Aragon, and that'll give him the right to do Alcanese, which is nice. <clears throat> we 
We still have the Duchy of Toledo, which I just don't want. <laughs> like, I, I want to give it to someone, but... I could give it to this guy. Because he's content and compassionate. He's sterile, though. So his primary heir is a brother. And his brother is not terrible, but he's ambitious. And because he's sterile, he's not going to be having any kids. I could give it to this guy. Lustful, trusting, and gluttonous. But he's a great knight. By God, if he's not a great knight. How does this guy fare? Too many duchies? Yeah, too many duchies from domain. Foreign culture group. Just chunking into it. Take some time. This is my only big issue, but I, like I said, he's going to die any second now. And this guy was kind of groomed for Badajoz. And he actually has a pretty good opinion of me. So that's good. So let's give Valencia to Valencia. Do I want to create any king titles? I, I, I in my opinion, I don't really think I should. But let's give the Duchy of Valencia to Valencia. Let's do this one first. Let's just do this one first. Okay. Well, that should help out significantly. What are your vassal obligations like? I haven't touched any of them yet. I'm in line to inherit the king, the kingdom of, uh, what's it called up here? So I could try to, like, plan to kill my wife. <laughs> Ooh, that would be terrible. That would be terrible. I shouldn't do that. But maybe I should. No, I don't want to do it. Oh my god. I could do it easily. Because I'm first in line. Okay. <sighs> He's pretty good. Pretty terrible. Duke Dunio, you're going to try and kill me, so fuck off. In fact... I need to put, I need to put, is there anyone in my court? No one in my court is worth it. Like she, she's probably the best thing I've got. So he, I get, now I have a powerful, I have a powerful duke that likes me, which is good. We'll assign her, that'll pump her up a little bit. We're about to do a feast, that'll make her even more happy. L'Oreal. <laughs> the beard like that. Um, how are you doing, Rodrigo? How are you doing, my brother? You're ailing. But your son is very crafty and not... Uh, not a warrior like I would have suspected. <laughs> we
We have to go probably help out with this war too, I think. And that'll help. That'll that'll really What? We're gonna gain stress because we're craven? I didn't know likelihood of dying in battle minus I didn't know that, that was a thing. Whoa, he's already pretty stressed out, bros. I'm gonna have to do this first. Let's do that. That will immediately increase some opinions here. He likes me and getting some gold real quick wouldn't be terrible. So I think we do this too. Let's create the... The Duchy... I don't want to create the Kingdom of Valencia. Because you don't want to give kingdoms away to people unless they are like... Yeah, this guy's for sure going to be great, right? Like, giving a kingdom title away is kind of risky. We don't even old. Oh, I guess we do. Got it, okay. So... We have... So, we, we currently hold... Let's take a look at our titles here. We have the Kingdom of Castile, the Kingdom of Aragon, the Duchy of Galicia over here. So we have Santiago as a, as like our proper location. But we also have the Duchy of Toledo, which I have no interest in ruling. I, I created it to give it to this guy, but I fucked that up. But we also have all of the lands of the Duchy of Castile. Except for this. Oh, I gotta press this button. Whoopsies. So, let's try and do this then. Valencia, create it. This title. Perfect. A lot of holes. That guy's pretty big. Work. Delicate. So, what would we. Is there an issue with granting people territory that doesn't match up? Like, since, like, I'm thinking of giving her this. We have so little money because, uh, the negative is because we have a massive army up, Joe. So they get unhappy. The, it would be part of the same duchy, but their borders don't match up. Um, I could give it to this guy. Holds the duchy capital. No one holds the duchy capital. This is the duchy capital.
I'm just giving away land. I mean, I guess also maybe giving this away to another vassal. I could make a new duke that'll be loyal. loyal. That's not a bad idea. In fact, that's I think what we go with. I mean, I can give it to this guy. I can grant this guy the title of Badajoz and then make him a duke. This makes him a stronger vassal, though. He'll go from having three territories to now four and a dukedom. What my opinion, my what I think I should do here is make another person here. grandson will just inherit this. Oh, because you will be ordered to claim title. A son just inherits this. Just this little county. She's 23. So yes, maybe we make a new vassal then for this guy. Right? My vassal limit is fine. Yeah, I have 30 more. So. I'm looking at... There was this one dude who was pretty solid. This guy? No. Who is that? This dude, Radulf. Yeah, I think we can give it to this guy. And we can then make him a duke. The problem is he's got zero stewardship and zero learn or seven learning. So he's not the best person. He from a personality standpoint, he is. Um Let's see if we have anyone better here. Because if I then give him the ducal title too, he'll just shoot up an opinion. I'll have another strong vassal. Because right now, we're going to have... We've got one, two... This is a third strong vassal. Which is really solid, I think. Let me sort this by stewardship real quick. I'm not going to give it to that guy. I'm going to go to hell. That guy's got a lot of lands. Um, temperate, callous, ambitious, impatient, stubborn, nope. Humble, cynical, and stubborn. Oh, that guy's a mayor. He's already landed. I need people that are ruler, not a ruler. This guy might be better. He's got at least 10 stewardship, so he'd give a little bit more domain taxes. He is craven, generous, and trusting. So, I think as far as Duke goes, I think he's a pretty good one. And then I filter for content and then trusting if no one is good enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What was that donation? Let me see the donation. Because we got our first donation of the day from Armand, you big dick daddy. Hey buddy, happy 100k, I guess 101k, dude. I remember you first getting this thing started years back, man. So happy for your success. Thanks, dude. Are you going to be playing World of Warcraft with Josh and I? Don't piss me off, Armand. I was swinging out of here out of nowhere. I am Armand's ass father. Wait, what was the question? <laughs> yeah, I agree with you, Chris. So I think this guy, is, this guy makes for a good vassal, right? Uh, given the county of Badajoz. Yeah, I think... Dude, I'm definitely going to do Shadowlands, I think, Armand. The the alliances look pretty cool. Like, the Vampire Alliance looks badass. Just for accepting the help from chat. We all improve together. THC Dreams, of course, my bro. 
Dude, I took some THC CBD stuff last night, THC dreams. <sighs> Slap like a rock. So we all agree this is a good vassal. This will, it matches up both religion and otherwise, too. We can get him to do all the stuff and then convert him. Not be a battle hose. Good, good, good. So, uh, this guy just kind of bothers me. For all intents and purposes, he is a great vassal. Give him the dookie. <laughs> oh, he's going to get the dookie. Okay, all right, Robbie. I could just make this dude the... I, I could just make this guy the, the Duke of Toledo. Uh, George, I have absolute crown authority, so there's no attacking. Um, I could just make him... I mean, he's 31, so he's going to be in it for probably my entire reign. He is sterile, so that does kind of affect things in his primary heirs, kind of a POS. But... I think it's probably a good bet, and I'll have another strong vassal. Oh, crochet cooking. I kind of like that, my dude. This will dole out almost all my duchy titles. We should create the Duchy of Castile, because then I'll be the rightful liege of this land, and I'll get more. But... <clears throat> The plan was to move our capital to Cordoba. And I think we should do that. Do you guys agree with that? So, here's what we're planning right now. Give this guy the Duchy of Toledo. Create the Duchy of Castile. And give it to someone. We have to, we'd have to find someone who would be a worthy uh, holder of Castile. And I would move my capital to Cordoba. But... The thing is, I like to kind of own my lands with Cordoba, so we'll see about these guys and who uh, gets it. What I, I pressed a button. I think the Duchy. I mean, the Duchy of Toledo. It it doesn't do me any favors right now. Yeah, you can move the capital. Can the titles leave your kingdom with inheritance? Uh, they can, depending on the situation. I've heard that, Armand. I watched some people play it. I watched some people play it, and they love it. But are we good? Should we should we pass the Duchy of Toledo down over here to this guy? That's going to really boost that up, I think. We'll still hold Galicia. I think we just, I think we create, we move it to Cordoba, Cordoba, and create the Duchy of Cordoba, and we're now de facto, or de, de, de jure, uh, rulers. Then check who will inherit after both brothers. Yeah, it, it, me, probably. Who owns the counties in Toledo? It's this guy right here. So, this dude owns all this. And I'm thinking of making him a duke because he's content and compassionate, and he actually has really good stewardship, so he'll probably make this land better. Yeah, CJ, 100%. So that's why right now, we, we are the Emperor of Spain, and the king, and this is the kingdom, the, the, this is the capital of uh, the Kingdom of Castile, in the Duchy of Castile, which we actually don't have. Alright, Armand, have a good one, dude. Shoot me up, or hit me up on uh, WhatsApp. They would be his vassals, because these are already given to another person, Denik. So, 
they, these two people, or this one location, would be his vassals. Would be his direct vassals. <clears throat> Granting the title will grant him those vassals. Oh, he's sitting. He's helping him out in that. Okay. Yeah, they got they got enough soldiers. They don't need me. Yeah, guys, please do make sure you're liking the stream. What, uh, Sanson? Which which do you think is a good move? Making this guy the Duke of Toledo. This is going to affect my stress, but I think it's it's important to just keep this guy in good graces. Run paused. Glory is widely known. There it is. Dynasty had changed. I didn't want that guy to fuck up our dynasty. Oh, what's... Okay, so he gave us a ton of money, which is good. The guests are gathered in the Great Hall, lords and ladies from far and wide. Mood is bright. Welcome, friends. No beneficiary in the crusade. We'll deal with that in a second. Your vassal, Count Rashid. Independence back in Rondo. We are happy to accept your proposed education arrangement. You're damn right. This guy? Who are you? He had a kid? That wasn't supposed to happen. Well... Let that go. We'll let that thing go then. We'll let that Liberty faction go. No. No. Not Count Rodrigo. Where is the Dejure capital? It's Toledo. Toledo is the Dejure capital of, of Hispania. Yes, my ruler has an heir. Disrupt schemes, please, because we have a rival that has high... What's it called again? Now, the problem I... I, I could make... The Toledo's development is 17, but look at Cordoba's at 26. It's so beastly. Port Physicians, okay. <sighs> what is this? Learning skill. What's, what's up with her? Ooh! A beautiful physician with 15 learning. 15 and renowned at 46. 41. This one's kind of winning out in my mind right now. They're both the same price. Because uh, I have the Duchy of Galicia. Not worth it on her. She's not terrible either. But Miracle Worker can cause issues with Catholicism. We would have to give up Galicia then. Which has got Santiago in it. I think we go with Jimena here. Well, maybe we go with Alausia Al here. Galicia has the other face height, correct. I can hold eight counties, though, which is nice. I thought Miracle Worker had an effect, though, on things. Yeah, it spends 100... I thought it had an effect on, like, whenever it goes to do actual medication, I, I thought it caused issues. Yeah, 
Yeah, exactly. So we go with... Oh, shit. Big stretch. I think we go with her. She's beautiful. Oh, she's callous, wrathful, and gregarious. Whereas she is compassionate, stubborn, and arbitrary. I just don't want my court physician to get involved in any kind of schemes, you know? Also an astute intellectual. She just has a natural 15. We'll go with her because she has the potential to get even better. And she's got a little bit more going, here's wise. Okay, so we did that. Look at my big ass army. Let's go. Mutual spirits. Count Diego gains 15 opinion of you. You go closer to form your friendship with Count Diego. Damn right, my direct vassal, Count Diego. We spoke evening all manner of subjects. As things would have, would have it, we seem to have a lot in common. Feast is a promise. What did I promise last night? I can't remember. What led up to it, but I what led up I can't remember what led up to it, but I do remember slapping the back of my vassal Count Rodrigo, telling him that I would do anything he asked me. Now rumors abound of the oath I swore. Promise is a promise. Oh god. Is he gonna want something bad? A weak hook? Are you gonna want to expand? Yeah, probably will. <clears throat> I can't really afford opinion hits right now. He's honest, gluttonous, and fickle. Let's just roll with the punches on this one. Promise is a promise. Right? Yeah, that's not good. 35 is going to put us in pretty bad territory. Promise is a promise. Shitty promise, but it's one nonetheless. You gonna pay me ten? You gonna pay me nothing? I just, I mean, I could actually release her. Nah. The Dilemma. Beast is dwelling down and I find myself deep in conversation with the sub subversive vassal, Marilicia. She inquires about my opinion on tax levels, a subject she is deeply interested in herself. Okay. Oh, what the fuck, a criminal? Oh God, she's hideous. God, she's, she's literally got the thing hideous. No mods, Ice Raven. Rivalry. I am more interested in you. No, we don't want that. Fascinates me well. There we go. A friend indeed. Let's crush out these armies. Why are you... Why is your marshal going down? Gout ridden? No. No, why is Duke Rodrigo getting just lambasted like this? Duke Rodrigo, no, brother. With everyone headed for their respective homes, I'm proud to say that the feast was a success. Nevertheless, I'm so grateful of the endeavor over for now. Nice. 
Game change look, yes. Quick little win. And disband these armies. Available perks. Time it takes to convert a county is no longer increased if that faith has higher fervor than your rate. Realm priest opinion plus 50. That's a peasant revolt leader. Yes, this is the leader. Ooh, and he is good. He is coming aboard. Good. So let's take a look here. I mean, he already he's got a positive enough right now. We'll get it on the next one. Religious icon for sure. So that went from like twenty-two years down to eight, which is great. Honestly, I think he's a pretty solid dude to have aboard. Stupidly, when the Pope is your vassal, he is not your realm priest. That's fucking dumb. Uh, the defense effects on attacking army are pretty good now, CJ. Like, it's... Oh, that was you just dropped on me, huh? That's crap. Franconian, huh? That is interesting. Is she present with me? Oh, does that... I wonder if that affects my chances of having children. Seventy-five percent chance versus... Thirty percent chance. Oh! Ah, she died in her dungeon. Oh no! What's up, Mark? How are you doing, dude? <laughs> I mean, time to time to kind of unify here, right? I'm gonna smash out Akanis because this guy modify feudal contract. Oh, March. Vassal, army gold maintenance minus 20%. To control territory. <sighs> Vassal can declare war regardless of the lead. Like, I want him to go declare wars. And... Get in solid with that land down there. But... I don't think that this is what I want to do. Sanctioned is not what it is. What I think it is, I think. Because I want him to go expand. I want him to take this over on his own. I want him to do that. Do I have to sanction his wars to do that? Or can he just do it on his own since he has the de your de your uh, title to it? You look like you could use a little uh, guardian. Me? How do I offer me? Am I? Why did I not see this? I could have just put my my mom as the uh, uh thingy.
Why does my mom have no relationships? Oh, this is my former. Yeah, this is my. This was. This was my mom. Oh no, I'm thinking about my. I'm different. Different playthrough. Different. Different playthrough. This was the old court physician. I'm trying to teach this kid. <laughs> Personal. Offer counsel as a, a, a... Offer him a guardian, making someone in his court the ward of the chosen adult. Are my all filled up? I am, that's why. But maybe I move my daughter. I've got good skills for my daughter. But maybe I move her to my her grandmother. Soon, Darioth. Soon. Because we gotta also move our capital too, so that's gonna cause a bit of an issue. <clears throat> hey Rodney, welcome aboard. Thank you for becoming a new member, my dude. This guy had a ton of kids. Oh, I think that was kind of intended. This guy had a ton of kids too. Damn, man. That was not it. It said none for him, so. Hmm. This guy's actually pretty badass. Look at him. I have all these old ass knights. <laughs> stench for you, I see. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, well. Yeah, that's actually not a good, bad call. What's up, lol, haha? Okay, okay. Can't consecrate the bloodline. We don't have either of those top two. You gain 100 chests because you're humble. Damn. Ooh. 
So, I still got to kind of decide what to do here. If I take over... If I take over Cordoba, if I move my capital there, um, I should then probably create the Duchy of Cordoba. But I still have all of Castile. And I still have Galicia. I still hold that Duchy title. This is part of the. This is part of Valencia. Well, I guess it was. Yeah, I mean, had to go on and everything. Okay, I'm gonna be right back, guys. I have to refill my water bottle, so give me two minutes here, um, and then we'll determine how to move forward, because we've kind of primed Cordoba to be our new capital, and we own it already as a barony, but we do not own these. These would be direct vassals of ours. In my opinion, you almost always want to have all of the domains of your capital. We won't have that in this case. We'll have the duchy, which will be nice. Um, we'll still have the duchy of Galicia, but we'll still have all the domains of Castile, which is the de jure title uh, or the de jure uh, capital, de jure capital of the kingdom of Castile Leon. So let me know what you guys think. When I come back, I'll read it all and I'll get acquainted with what you guys are saying and we'll move forward from there. So talk amongst yourselves. I will be back in like two, three minutes. I got to go refill this water bottle. We can give away Galicia for sure. I can give that away to someone. I'll, I'll think I can marry my daughter matrilineally and give it away to my daughter or wait till I have a son and give it away to my son. I should also the work on this. More importantly, not swaying my patriarch. I should romance her. It's a 70% chance. And she's shy and I'm Craven. Mm, together, we make the perfect couple. Or I seduce, which is a 5% chance and it's faster. Yeah, let's go with this one. So we'll be right back.
Okay. I'm reading back here what you guys are saying. Okay. Give away Galicia and make Cordoba. Give it to a family member. Got you. They could count these. Yeah, I totally agree with you, Bobby Page. Fabricate claims on Cordoba. That's not a bad one. This is the second life of my playthrough, Vaspia. Okay, so it seems unanimous that we need to move down south. Um, and we kind of split this up amongst other people. That we make a new duke. <clears throat> and I don't know anyone of my... Are these are the Fuentes. Dude, so Vospia, we, we created... The Emperor Empire and everything. He just died, like just now. So these are just these are second cousins, I guess you could say. No, son is son of a the son of my cousin is my second cousin. We don't want to give it to him. Because if we give the ducal title to him, he'll have both dukedoms when he dies. When this guy dies. In fact, I don't really want to give any titles to that character. But unfortunately, these are the only ones in the in the dynasty right now. Excuse me. As once removed. Maybe try to get Cordova plus Seville. We can. We can holy war this and take it out. Um, oh, Seville. Sibilla. Sibia. Why not Granada? Because Granada, the whole duchy of Granada is like pretty much for the taken. And 1718. 1814. This is 21. Sevilla is pretty fucking jacked. I'm first in line to inherit this. So there's a chance that I inherit this if this guy dies. True. I think we kind of just take our time on this and... Time for an accident! We also have to wait a number of years before we can even convert the religion here. Seven damn years. I mean... God, it's a pain in the ass. 
I don't think we've built any buildings here. Oh, we've done a, a couple. What up, Coggles? We have not made the church. We have not made the Grand Cathedral of uh, uh, Santiago de Compostela. We'll unpause here. Let this kind of go for a little bit. Oh, what the fuck? Sweet smiles and little lies. Just like other children her age, my daughter and, and heir, Benita, sometimes lies and tests boundaries. However, she often avoids suspicion with her sweet demeanor, and people always forgive her when she does get caught. I wonder just how much she gets away with. It's charming. Interesting. Yeah. First Empress of Hispania, if I have no kids. Um. So, this guy... won't take Alcaniz, right? He has to have sanctioned wars to do it. Zone of action, nice to meet you as well, dude. I'm glad you enjoy my mountain mountain blade videos, which I will make plenty more of, trust me. You're decent. Ooh, Liberty Faction's getting cut. Holy shit! Alright. I think we gotta kinda up this. We're just. I get it. And we don't want to really keep a high amount of dread, but maybe we need to crack the whip real hard right now to get all this in line. These guys are just... This is huge. So, I say we call a hunt. And this will lower our stress. I don't, I don't, I have no idea what this does. Like, I, I know what it does, but I don't, it says some stress. Is it just a random number? But I can call the hunt real quick, get some stress reduced, then counteract that with, because I don't want to push into the next stress level if I can prevent it. Yeah, exactly, Vaspia. They won't join. Well, uh, a free. Let's hold on to it then. Coggles, I'm pretty sure that's probably the case, my dude. They said no announced, no nothing in September. So now that we're in October, I, I imagine something's coming up. So let's sound the horn here. We'll lose some stress. And then let's kill a human being. And that's, I mean, this was just a little cash cow anyway. But that brings our stress up to 20. Oh, so that should hopefully start to bring these people back in line. Why are they all drop so drastically? They were all like, this guy was positive a little bit ago. Short rain. The rain, this will start to chip away at it. This is getting fervor. The noise from the others have faded away by the time vassal Duke Edouard and I stalk up to the heart. We are almost within striking distance when Edouard whispers to me, now that we are finally by ourselves, there is something I need to have to tell, let you know about Count, F Count Fernando. <laughs> Please, tell me more.
Take out the strongest faction leaders. Holy shit! This guy hates me, right? I already hosted a feast. The first thing we did. See? Can't do it again until 11.05. Three thousand. Yeah, so we need to give This is, this is kind of worth it. Do I have a strong hook on you? <laughs> what? I was looking for something. Yeah, she's on domestic. Good. So this will put this guy into a positive with me. Just be funding the revolt by bribing them. Okay. I mean, honestly, this is like all my military power. Like, these are all my, my pivotal dukes. For the most part. I mean, Aragon seems to be on my side. Valencia is on my side, but he's they're they're still pretty pitiful. I do have allies. I have this empress, my wife, who doesn't have the most. We've given money and title. We've given a lot of stuff here in the opening year of my reign. Did that independence faction got so much fervor so fast all of a sudden? Hello from Spain. How are you doing, Jamark? Most of them, yeah. Why did everyone get so mad all of a sudden? There's something that made people pissed. Nemesis, obviously that's going to be an issue. I do not stream on Twitch. This is YouTube. I'm a YouTube guy. Foreign culture group. Yeah, I guess that's a thing. This is Iron Man right now, Libera. Hence the title that says Iron Man. Or does it not? No, it doesn't. Whoopsies. Yeah, this is Iron Man. They're so bad, though. They are so bad. Like, Duke Rodrigo has 1,200. This guy has got 3,000. 
And it's a four. It's only actually three now. Duke Rodrigo has got gout. Long range bonus boost to short range penalty is far. Yeah, I mean, you're right, Dariath, because it's like a 20 bonus to a 20 penalty. So it's like a 40 uh, opinion drop. Um, but Duke Rodrigo is in this. Like he's he's a part of this. Guess I gotta just see how this goes. It's going up. Faction military power both threshold plus one. Base is three. You will be sent. This is getting a lot of power fervor too. I don't know what to do, guys. Can't really form an alliance with everyone, with anyone. Yeah, but this is if, if I blackmail and hook. I get stressed because I'm just fuck, man. Just. No options here. Oh, wait, what? Why is that the case? Why is it showing that? Located in Berg? What the fuck? They're all ducal titles, Josh. You are shy and ambitious. No thanks. My dread's pretty high, and I'm surprised it's not like causing anything. What are you saying though? I've got people I can imprison actually. I could demand he converts, and if he declines, it would give me a, a chance to. What if he declines conversion? Does that mean I can, uh, I can put him in jail? I can't. I, I could create a kingdom title with Aragon. That would put Barcelona, Barcelona under uh, Aragon. All these people are like not likely to happen.
This guy died randomly. But I could imprison this little dude and kill him. I mean, you guys are saying one level of stress isn't bad, but I'm 23. I have to wade through a lot of that. This one will succeed. He doesn't really have any problem with me. I'm basically just going to kill this guy for no problem. guy that I just appointed in prison him <clears throat> demand conversion on anyone you arrest guys I am like at such a fucking impasse right now I don't have to do this guy needs to just die he's like on the cusp and I'm already working on his son The one with the highest army value is this guy. <sighs> if I can get him out of this, then it's huge. It's not going to happen. Goes from highest army down. Thanks, Chris. No, no, it doesn't, because this guy's got 26. It shorts from highest contribution. That's weird. Action soldiers do they have? Oh, because he's got a vassal. Yes, I don't, I don't know the situation here. Now they're all Catholic for the most part. This guy is not. So I could demand his conversion. And I mean, he only is contributing 4%. I can make this guy a part of my council. I would replace Duke Rodrigo. And Duke Rodrigo would still stay on here. I'm surprised Duke Rodrigo is even on here. But I could swap this. I could swap them out. Bobby Page. So. I'm currently working on battlements. My royal prerogative was not finished with my last guy. So, Crown Authority would go from 4 to 2, meaning that vassals could go to war. I could swap this and it might help me out because he's got a minus 40 because of he wants a seat on the council. This would give him a seat on the council, which would give him a lot of positive opinion 
And since he is the large, one of the largest contributors of that faction, it might kind of cut the heels out of the entire independence. Assist plots? Why? Well, yeah, I could do that, but... It would go to three? I, I don't know if it goes to three or does it go to the next low one? Or does it go to three or is it the one that you can actually do? So I think we swap this out. Bleep mop, I got nothing. I can't save scum it, uh, Bobby. This is um, a hard one. This is Iron Man. If I abandon this scheme, though, I'm seducing Empress Ida. If I abandon that scheme, like, how bad is that? I mean, I could... I could do that, but I'm not going to do that. Because you know how, like, th there's certain schemes you can't attempt again for a certain amount of time? Um... If I start, if I abandon that scheme, will I still be able to restart it? Yeah, you can't, that, that's what I'm kind of worried about. But, it's, I mean. Just wait, Darioth, you're saying? Hold it out as is. Because if this can complete in 11 months, the sway on him, I might be able to pull him out of here. It's not the negative consequences that I'm worried about. Ooh, ho, 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 ho. My vassal countess Godina has accused my vassal count Halal of having an extramarital affair with his lover Karima. How could he defile his sanctity? Should have killed her. Should have done it. Okay, my vassal Count Asina has been has brought forward undeniable evidence that Karima was fathered by my vassal Count Halal. Jesus, wonder did who would have known? Well, Karima, you put yourself in a position that is going to actually help me out by executing you. Work off some stress. Another lap, you lose 24 stress. And an execution is in order. Sorry, Krima, I didn't want this for you, but you will help me bring my faction under an iron rule like my father had before me. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Alright, we're just going to swap this way. Okay. I could send this dude a gift. They all have a good amount of money. So the new debt mechanic won't affect them much. <sighs> Diego's pretty pissed at me. Like, as he should be. The ultimatum just went up to 15. Happening. Wait a minute. Duke Edward? Why is he involved in this? 
bastard ass. Is, is the dread just not going to have an effect on anyone? That's so surprising, Tom. I thought that was going to be the thing that helped me. Like, to get all the positive... Like, I get, I made this guy a duke, and he's pissed. He's like, nah, no, I'm not a fan. He's pregnant now, at least. My, my uh, sister. Uh oh, your cousin? Is that his son? Oh no, brother. True, but not by much. That's true. If it fires, it fires, and we'll just kind of deal with it as as we see. Curse undone. <laughs> Duke Nunya, fuck you. <laughs> the twists and turns of fate have not always been to my advantage. God know that I was cursed the day that I met Duke Nunya. Today, however, that curse has been lifted. Fate has smiled upon me and brought the loathsome coxcomb to his grave. Yes. That dropped that substantially. What are you putting your renown in? Uh, Chuck Norris? Kind of... I'm not really focusing. Oh, renown. Renown, renown, renown. Um, we're focusing our renown on Convergent Blood is our next one. Then we'll probably do stuff like Glory to help out with uh, desirable matches. That helped us out significantly. Still... Still up there, though. It dropped down, then came back up. But Discontent is dropping here. Monthly changes minus three. Faction military powers below threshold minus six. So hopefully this can kind of continue to drop. The nice thing too is... What the fuck? So did he just use his hook to, to put himself under the council? And he can't be fired for 25 years? You're about to get fucking assassinated. <laughs> you got hooked! <laughs> oh! Look at this, Rodrigo! You could just be put into jail because you're an asshole! Now, Rodrigo, that wasn't really nice of you, was it? Sure, you're a great knight, but you're also a great asshole. And just like most things in my life. That's a good point, Bobby. The unfortunate thing, though, is he ousted this guy that we did as like a, is like a really big means to kind of bring stuff back in line. Ugh. Oops, I'm sorry, I'm gonna do that. Does it matter though? Did the one that you have in there? Yeah, now that guy's got a huge negative opinion of me. He dropped down to negative forty-seven. So do we take the tyranny hit? I mean, I can I can just straight up put that guy directly into jail. It's a 100% chance. Uh-oh, what's this? A friendship is a debate between equals. If one only side is engaged, it falls apart. With so many friends, 
Spread to the winds, I barely have time to keep in touch by letter, much less give them the attention they deserve. Perhaps it should be easier if I were to let someone drift away. You're my friend? Oh yeah, these guys are all friends. Oh my god, 60 stress? He's ailing. And this is the this is the 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 successor. She's my spy master? Not my spy master. So we want to keep this guy in our good graces. Oh, oh, Alicia it is. No longer friends with Alicia. Fuck it. <laughs> I think we made the right choice anyway. I kind of want to imprison this guy and just like take his title. And exchange piety for gold. Uh, I've already done it. I do it for two more years. Got all this damn prestige. Definitely losing the crusade out there, which is surprising because we have higher relative strength numbers. Thirty-one percent chance counts as Kara. I mean, there's a hundred percent chance. I mean, so why do I want to imprison her? What's the benefit of this? Could any of the people to get you potentially be vassals to a duke that likes you in your realm? Plus forty six percent. Damn, man. I have t I have kingdom titles. Let me see. Yes, he is in here. But I don't think she's worth doing much about. Um. Oh, that's kind of a cool idea right there. 85% imprison a faction member. Trigger the faction now. It's weaker than you. Uh, Saraxis, that's what we did with this dude. He's got a positive opinion of us, and he just wants to kill me for some reason. Ah. So, this was created.
Okay. So are you guys saying that we try to imprison someone here? 1300, 3000, dude, this guy's got so much. I mean, I, I can imprison this guy. It's a 100% chance that this will go through. I can imprison him and take the duchy. Because none of his sons are going to inherit it. Go the tyranny mode and imprison the bad boys, like I said. <laughs> Unfortunately, he's just like a pretty good character. I'm pretty pissed off about this feudal contract bullshit. No, Tom, I wouldn't I wouldn't revoke his stuff. I put him in prison. I'm the primary heir. I just put him in the dungeon and he rots and dies. You see what I'm saying? I don't know if it goes down one crown authority if it jumps down to two, because I can't do high crown. This motherfucker. I'm gonna... Okay, guys. What's it going to be? Because remember, we also have this to deal with, too, in a little bit. Um, do I imprison this guy and try and jumpstart this war? Um, I can throw him in jail, and if he dies, I'm the primary heir. I inherit all of this, this duchy. So we can go that route. And this is the strongest vassal we've got. He has the largest army. Um, or do I just wait and see how this plays out? If it's peasants, they nominate a leader. If it's a liberty faction, I think it's the, the highest contr contributor is the leader. Yes, I'll get 20 tyranny. Waiting means the war was going to happen anyway. I can see the sway fit. Uh... Here, we'll just do this. We'll wait these seven months out, at the very least. It's not going to kick off for 15, 17 months. So. Oh, shit. Oh, King of Jerusalem. Yeah, that's the big thing. Is I don't want these to both go together. Good point, Kevin. Mm-hmm.
I mean, the tyranny is whatever. I guess the tyranny doesn't bother me that much if it's like, okay, I'm doing one tyrannical move here to, to like, quell the rest of them. Hmm. County of Castellon is fighting against him. I could try and join this war. Especially because he just lost. Yeah, almost all of them it looks like. 20%, 37%, 84, 99, 45, 88, 98. Yeah, I could do this. A peasant faction, huh? Ah, someone left. Good. This is building up a lot of furbs. Four months. Who, Darioth, who do you think we should imprison? Don't imprison the one you will succeed. If they escape, they will rebel. I, I don't understand that. I've had never had anyone escape from prison. That lost some fervor, which is good. I wanted to pop in and tell you I've been binging your guy videos and catching up on this Castile series. You do a great job. Well, thank you very much, man. I really appreciate that, Casey. I'm glad you're enjoying it, my guy. It's been a fun adventure, that's for sure. Holy crap, look at this. Guess someone else is dealing with their own little peasant uprising, huh? Penis head. Ah, did not sway him. At a 95% chance, we did not succeed. Do I offer to join this peasant uprising? Because there's a chance, because when you join there aren't there are fights and you help out. And this is like half of his army. Iron Long, thanks for watching, man. Hope you enjoyed. Because if you do this, they sometimes can form a friendship with you. And obviously by doing that, they leave any factions. Or do I just leave him to his own devices? We'll see how he deals with this. It's just going to whittle his forces down, which is good. Because half of his army just joined that revolt. Did he just win it? Wow, I guess he won. Their contribution's going down. 
I don't know what the roleplay would team would do in this case, man. He's too young. He wouldn't know what to do. He would consult his advisors. Go to the war with North Africa and put all the faction commanders as force commanders. Tom, that's actually pretty hilarious. Oh, I don't know. I don't know what happened. I have no idea why you guys are all like that. Pancho has passed away, unfortunately. He has died. So I don't know what to do. Uh, we're pulling up money at an astounding rate, to be totally honest. Um, this is having its own little situation. I mean, yeah, I could go put them in an army and go to Jerusalem and suicide that army up against like the walls of some city. Um, I have a wife. He's also the king or queen of uh, Lavaringia over here, or Lothar, Lothar, Lothangria. So maybe we just imprison this dude. Um, we can imprison him, keep him in jail, and since I'm primary heir, if he dies in jail, then I get Seville. I don't have to take it over, or I don't have to try and reclaim it, or anything. Zoro, I sometimes do, but not not a ton. So I want the imprisonment to fail. Okay. I just don't I don't have the means to assassinate him succinctly. Oh, this guy I want to fucking kill. So, Kevin, I have an alliance with these people. They have 1,200 soldiers. Okay, so are we saying to imprison... So, are we imprisoning him or Duke Rodrigo, who has 23%? I want to do this to poor Rodrigo, man. Medik, my advice is watch what I'm doing right now. <laughs> We're dealing with it right here, right now. I don't have any means to secure an alliance with anyone bigger right now. One hundred percent guy, grant him faction members as vassal problem goes. It is Thraxus. It is Thraxus. That is El Cid. That is beat up El Cid. Old Ailing El Cid, who I don't want to put in the prison, who's my favorite character, one of my favorite flanks from history. He's gout-ridden, he's scarred, 
He's disfigured. Like, this guy's had such a run. It is. It's Vivar. So, I, I see what a lot of you guys are saying. It triggers the revolt. But won't this, imprisoning this guy, trigger the revolt too? Won't people just get pissed off? No, he will escape prison. Give him a special pardon. I know. <laughs> I thought the 20 tyranny hit would, pe would piss people off. Oh. Yeah, I see. I've never had anyone escape my prison. That's why I'm like, I don't know what you guys are saying. See, this is where my brain's kind of at. Like, Chris is saying, no, you have 100% to get him. Taking his troops out of the way, which is kind of what I want. That, that faction leaves. Yeah, that's 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 kind of why I'm I'm on Darius' uh, wavelength here. It should happen all the same if you successful if you are successful in imprisoning. Because I would think that keeping this guy out of the fight, on accept, loses thirty opinion of you, all family imprisoned you may incite the Liberty faction to revolt. Well, either way, okay, okay, I see what you're saying. So imprisoning this guy, but it doesn't happen, incites the revolt, but I don't take the, the tyranny hit. Read on their clientele. Ah, on decline. Loses 20 opinion. Allows you to rightfully imprison the duke and then imprisoning. I get what you're saying. So, by imprisoning this guy, if, it, if he declines it, Still piss him off. I, I just like again the big mentality too behind imprisoning this guy. It removes him from the faction list. He has the largest amount of troops, and I can keep him in jail until he dies, and I get his whole duchy because I'm the primary heir. I guess that's like where my brain's thinking here. Like, if I'm going to take the stress hit and everything, it might as well be to consolidate a lot of power in the south. Okay, I see what you're saying. And for those of you guys who are watching after the stream is live, I apologize. We're just trying to learn how to do this the right way. So if you are dealing with your own kind of uh, succession issues, this is hopefully helping you out. All right, calm down, Martin. Yeah, 
Yeah, I don't really want to do this to Rodrigo. I don't know how many are borderline on joining the faction because I have people with positive um, opinion that are not in that faction. And he's my ward, so he'll never join. I couldn't tell you who is or is not on the cusp of joining. Me either, Kevin. Fuck, man. I'm just analysis paralysis right now. It's between these two. Because a lot of you are all saying really good things. You just have your own way of playing. So it's really interesting. And a lot of you guys are kind of like speaking... I'm not following your train of thought because you're saying stuff after I say stuff. So, like, it, a lot of the time when you're talking to me, you have to use the complete sentence of exactly what you're referring to. Because you just say, no, it's him. I don't know what that means. So, sometimes if you say something and I'm just not registering it, it's because I don't know what you mean. I guess we're just kind of wait here. Still building a ton of money. We can kind of build up Cordoba in the meantime. I don't know what to do at Cordoba though. Maybe tax offices. Yeah, no problem, Steven. Uh, Machine Gun Funk. It's because we're playing on a stream, dude. I'm not gonna just press five and like let this shit rapid fire through everything. Why would I wanna make him a king? Grant him rebellious people to keep faction power down. Leisure Palace, dude. Oh, stress loss. I like that. We actually fucking might need the hell out of that. But we need the duchy title first. Kind of starting to lose a little fervor here. This guy might actually pop out of it. Which is Teresa. And Diego. Help me truly see the splendor of the realm. Nothing less than honor to serve as your vassal. I am blessed to have such a grateful servant, Count Diego. Yeah, but I'm also empowering him, though, Bad Potato. I'm giving someone who has, like, a known hate for me strength over me. So this, look at this. She's not part of my court. Pause and take a look at that in a second here. Invite Benita Jimena to me the court. She will be your courtier. So, like...
Duke Gus seems to enjoy our latest feast immensely. He got along quite well with everyone he spoke to, even the adult guests. Gets gregarious, or greedy, or lustful. Uh, gregarious, for sure. Lustful is terrible to have. And again, he is my vassal, so I just want to kind of keep him in somewhat of a good situation. You're right. She does have her own court. Man, it kind of is crazy how that worked out, right? How like, oh yeah, you know, just doing this and she becomes the fucking king of Lothrongia over here. But what happens for kids with her is a, is the issue. I can make more duchies. We're going to make the duchy of Cordoba, but I will now go over my duchies unless I give out another ducal title. I can create another kingdom. I can create the kingdom of whatever this is. I can create the kingdom of Andalusia and become that king. Yeah, another kid will inherit both titles, but how do I... Will, will I continue to make kids with my wife? Is the problem. Yeah, I don't want to make more titles to give away. I would make more titles to keep. Like, if I created the kingdom of Andalusia, that would be my king title. What was the yes to? Yes, my, my wife and, and... Her location's over there. Located in Berg, see? Okay, so I, that'll just kind of keep doing its thing. Okay. Church and State, Realm, Priest, Supreme, plus 5, 50... Monthly piety per night, plus one percent. Faith creation and reformation cost my percent. I don't know, man. <laughs> Maybe I do pedagogy. I could switch over here to intimidation. Studies, better outcomes. That might be pretty good. Uh, this is because he's got a lot of wards. Yeah, learn on the job is one of my favorite ones. Yeah, that's not a bad idea, Chris. I think what we'll do is we'll go down Scholar and get these two because these helped me out in my last situation a lot. But I do also think that going into diplomacy and getting um, stuff in here like family focus and trying to pick up, um, what is it? Befriend is really strong. But I, I want to get to open-minded quickly. We'll do that. This is plummeting, which is good. I can give this guy money and hopefully try and get him off of that. work.
Good thing you sent that single guy over there. They wouldn't have done it without you. Pregnant! Man, better not join your little shit. I think what we should do is, in my opinion, you guys let me know about this. So my daughter, my player heir, and my ward, she is intelligent and charming. And I am now, uh, I am her ward. I could make her mother her ward, someone else, because there's a chance that we're going to have a male heir. And if I'm going to waste stress on being the ward of a male heir, or of an heir, I'd rather it was a male heir so it didn't cause any issues. Because I have male preference in the... Uh, in the succession laws. Although I can also designate my heirs, which is also important. What determines which court the kid will be in? Uh, it looks like the kid's gonna be in that court. And I think it's because my wife, when, when the child was born, my wife was a queen and I was a duke. But now that I'm an emperor, I think the child will join my court. Well, the other ward, so the other, the ward is my daughter. And the, my thought process here is I can make this guy my ward and he will pretty much, he'll fall in line a little bit easier, especially with peda, pedagogy going. And they can become your friends. Yes, we have claim on everything, but we can't raise an army right now. Like I can. But I need this to kind of take its own natural course before we get to that point. Children, follow the wife. Saraxis, that's fucked up. That's crap, man. So I have to invite her into my court. Who is this? My friend Manuel. Uh, no! <laughs> How could you? If you were still with me, I know you would tell me to be strong. That things will get better. You'd be right as you always were. But first I must curse and cry. Damn it. This was my former... Nope, she didn't like me anymore. Patriarch. And the son. So hopefully that'll be good. Ah, uh, nope, that's, I don't want to go to Swedish. Well then. Where's this? Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> Just as I planned. So this is part of Cordoba. It is now mine. By right. What is somewhere to happen to this kid? Yeah, my wife is still in diplomatic range, correct. So let's give this then. Dude, look how beasty this little guy is going to be. So he's got a Herculean dad and a, and a genius mom. Came out being intelligent and hale. What a little beast! Is your marshal increasing control in your holdings? No. 
My Marshall's a piece of shit. Um, the control of my holdings is all perfect. In my immediate holdings. guy man i'm so mad at i'm so mad that he's here yeah no i don't even want to so let's i think no we don't want to land a little guy he's too young to land right yeah and also he's an heir so he'll become a duke so let's not do that what's up leo how are you I know that child's that child's the golden one, right? <laughs> but he, uh, bad potato. He's the heir to this duchy, though. We don't want to give him another duchy. Yeah. Otherwise, I totally agree with you. He would be, it would be perfect. But let's take a look. So, not a ruler. Callous, impatient, temperate. Ooh. This guy might be pretty good. Is he ugly? Diligent, content. He's arrogant, though. I don't think so, Max. Can he marry your daughter? Sure, he could. Let me check Thraxus. It doesn't need to be someone necessarily old. It needs to be someone that's going to be a good... Um, we want someone who's Catholic. Because the faith here is Catholic. Um, Steward. So these guys would be good dudes. I would ideally want... Right. I don't think, there's, I, don't think I have many Galicians left. I think they all kind of... Shy, stubborn, and chaste. Arrogant, cynical, and honest. This one, this guy is just content. I, I, yeah, I kind of want to put Castilian to try and make more Castilian places. Good call, guys. Good call. Thank you for taking me off that. This guy might be good. Alfonso, he's humble, generous. See, uh, here Ramon here is content. All right, I have to. I, I'm. I've been drinking so much water today. I gotta pee again, real quick. Sorry, guys. Sorry, 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 sorry.
So Alfonso's a solid one. Gomez is brave, vengeful, and fickle. I don't like all those. That's a shitty combo. Uh, feel Aldo. See him. Ah. Who is he? <laughs> Who is this man? Stubborn, deceitful, and temperate. Ugh. No like this. No, no bueno here. Uh, leave, leave Wong because that's what I am. Exactly. Brave people will hate me. So I think that this guy right here, humble, generous, and wrathful. I mean, yeah, he has a natural dread increase, but he's humble. That should help me out. We have a bad chancellor? The reason she's there is because she's the best in my court, actually. So I'm thinking Alfonso. I think he's a, probably a pretty good one. Any Craven candidates? Just Simone here. I just saw your current state of play, Chris. Yeah, Alfonso it is. Sorry, guys. Alright, the county of Coruno? Coruna? So what we're going to do here is we will swap off of being the Duke of um, Galicia. In fact, we'll probably make this guy the Duke of Galicia. Um, when we take the dukedom of Cordoba down here, it'll be, it'll make some sense. And we can also create, so you guys tell me if this sounds right to you. Um, if we're going to create the Duchy of, Cord of Cordoba, shouldn't we also create the kingdom of Andalusia? Because that is the... Um, did the Navarre Aragon line of your dynasty just die out? I don't think so. I don't know. Yeah, I still have the holy site. Santiago is the holy site. Because don't we want to hold the kingdom and the duchy titles of the places that are our capital is? Should we been playing for three and a half hours? Damn, man. Time flies when you're trying to fucking deal with this. This is getting better and better, though. Right, we would do one at a time, for sure. For sure. A lot of games need to fuse, I think. <laughs> Oh, man, we just made this guy and he joined up. Fuck, man. I'm passing through the castle gardens for a morning walk when a soft breeze carries the voices of Henrique and Sibyl to my ear. The two courtiers are talking to each other in a secluded spot nearby, frequently glancing around to make sure nobody is listening. While it is hard for me to make out to make out most of their words from a distance, it is clear that their discussion relates to Duke Fernando. Oh, what can this be about?
This guy's just a simple knight. He's a bad... He's not a terrible knight. This is just a simple courtier. Dude! Lover's pox with, her with Herculean? This is... Beast! <laughs> Unhand my balls, beast! It's too, it's too bad I can't use... Uh, spouse stuff. Me either, bad potato. We went from being in good graces to bad. Get 20 dread for free, basically. So I can warn Fernando. And it'll give me 20 rep with him. Raxus over there, quoting, uh, what's it called? Uh, My Chemical Romance. My Chemical Romance? I don't remember. In 20 Dread, um, Injury Challenge. This has a 61% chance of going off. You're right, 100%, Tom. No, I did not do any minor tyranny that I remember. Panic at the Disco. That's it. Thank you. God. My emo days. Um, okay. So... Wrong guy. Well, do we torture my bros or do we go for the warning? I leave it to you guys. <clears throat> torture or warning. So basically, dread or raw opinion gain. I'm going to gain the dread no matter what. I have a 30% chance of not finding anything out. It's nice because I'll, I'll basically be getting free dread. Yeah, I'm kind of on the dread route right here. I've also never done this, so I'm, let's see how this goes. It takes a while to loose the two prisoners' tongues, but my jailer is a patient man. After several hours of interrogation, the two plotters are ready to confess their secret. The subject of their discussion was an unsavory haver of Duke Fernando's that I was completely unaware of. Ooh, a deviant secret. A harsh price for vital information. Ooh. Mmm! Beautiful! Yeah, no, I get some stress, but fuck you, Duke, because that is a strong hook taking you off of this that I thought you were on, but you're not. I guess it's not really worth it. <laughs> I thought he was on this. He was, but he's not anymore. Are you wounded? Um, bub bub? Um, bub bub? Are uh, you all woundy? You woundy pooty? Fucker. Everyone's just fucking trying to kill me over here. I, uh, strong hooks don't expire that I know of. Yeah, this never expires. I mean, this guy's not a bad vassal because he's. Uh, I have a strong hook on him. I might as well get this blackmail going. I want to get—I want to lose the opinion right now. Is 
Isn't he involved in Another daughter. Ugh. A good Castilian name. Margarita, my favorite pizza. Ah, uh, good point, I see us. Ooh, Sway Andalusian culture. A common of Andalusian heritage has been accosted in the streets of Burgo after suffers a minor performance. I could perhaps convince by making a statement in their defense, I could convince the equally Andalusian of my good character. But I might risk killing you know, my Castilian peers. <laughs> the Castilians are of superior moral fiber. Hmm. I mean, the ten, the ten opinion is kind of huge right now. I think I just need to eat it and let it kind of do its thing. What court is that daughter in? We're gonna find out right now. Let's do this. Any of these people? No. Get a little stress for it. Get that hook going. At least he won't join, join in on any schemes or anything. What if this guy were just to die? Oh, he's kind of melancholic. Just saying, it's looking pretty good for me. Oh, that's what we're going to check. She's in my court. Could matrilineally Lily marry her into England or France. Guys, that's pretty sweet. Prince Bouchard of England. Five thousand troops. Fifty six hundred. And that gives us a possible expansion northward, correct? Right? Yeah? Yeah? Right? No, not off to France with her, Aceus. He joins my court. I did matrilineal. Uh, we need to bolster our... We need to not um, get rid of our, our... I mean, she's a genius. So we can't be just throwing that to the wind. He has no congenital traits unfortunately in fact there's never like any like worthy congenital like if I did inheritable traits there's never any real good ones for like a strong alliance is what I meant my nephew I can marry this little guy but I think that getting a strong alliance right now is going to be huge so do we go France or do we go England um humble and impatient you're correct. He does not join my court until they are married. You are 100% correct. This would not give him any claims. Prince William. I think we go with France because they're a closer ally. 5,500 versus 5,600. It's negligible. And they're they're dealing with so much crap over there. Yeah, I mean a hundred percent. 
They've got so many children, though. This is the last in the line, too. How old is he? How old was he? So that's because that's something to consider. He's 51 and he's ailing. So who's the heir? It's Henri. Because. Hey, Connor, what's up, dude? I'm actually about to stop streaming, so. You should be all good. Um. Yeah, the daughters won't matter, but if but here's my question When he dies and the son takes over that invalidates the alliance, correct? Holy crap seven kids second to last Well, it's still a good it's still a good marriage, I'd say. It's matrilineal. So, I think this is a good move for now to help me consolidate power. Uh, we're going to engage into the uh uh, the Kingdom of France again just like Sancho did his father before him to help him consolidate power he shall do the same I think that this makes a lot of sense and we'll get the claims which is nice the sibling of the next kid and king is a good target ooh cleft foot Jesus run away So you're saying like that? Yeah, I think so, Tom. I can't... There's situations where it happens. They are related and there's a risk of inbred. Oh no! <laughs> Parents. What do you mean they're related? Where's the relation? That's weird. Maybe your father's mother is her. A relation can go up like four generations. Yeah, because... Uh... Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. There it is, right there. Because of this. Because this was a child with through that wedlock, it looks like. Yeah, 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 there it is, there it is. There's the parentage. That's weird. It showed us a different one at first. Okay, so... Youngest son, arrange this marriage with my daughter. Matrilineal. So I think this will be good. We'll pull that into our family, which will be nice. We'll get this uh, this alliance solidified. We're not going to get any inheritable traits, which is kind of a bummer. Um, but 
In order we focus on that. Shit. Okay, these kids are made of flour. Let's see if there's just anything there real quick. I, I don't think it's worth like trying to I think going for the for the power alliance is good because he they're both young and they're gonna make a lot of kids. So let's just go with what we've got. Alliance power, and we'll go. We'll choose a son that hopefully has genius to try and propagate that the 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 genes traits. Matrilineal send proposal. Bring that into the line. This management get uh, get Torx. There is battles, uh, but they're kind of RNG based. Okay. So at that, guys, let's go ahead and roll some credits here. We're gonna we're gonna conclude our stream. We went a whopping almost four hour stream here. So let me go ahead and say thank you to some people. We got some donations here. Um, we got a four ninety six from Siyoshi and then a five dollar donation from Armand earlier here today. Um, tomorrow we're gonna be doing a stream, a, a sponsored one, I think it is. We gotta find out the details on that. Mark the video. Um, but we'll be doing that tomorrow, I believe, with uh, Turin, with H for Havoc, with um, Air of Carthage, with Dov Plays. So it'll be a lot of fun. You'll see that tomorrow on all of our respective channels, I believe. But we still haven't kind of hashed that out. Um, and I'll be doing a follow-up video to it as well where I'm going to be talking about if you're coming to Crusader Kings from Total War, what to expect and what it's kind of like. It's not a comparison video to say which one's better or anything like that. It's just solely to kind of, uh, what the hell is going on over here? Why is this blinking? Are you still at war, you dirty idiot? Go finish it off, man. Um, but we'll be back here soon. Uh, it looks like you guys want to see the vassals and courts video. So that one's going to be coming out here too this week. Um, a lot of great stuff. I'm going to be holding off on Baldur's Gate. I know the, the um, early access starts in two days. I'll probably be playing it personally. But I'm going to just wait a little bit. I do want to play it on the channel. But I feel like if I play it now, it'll just kind of like... It won't be as great because we have to... We'll be curtailed by the amount of content because it'll be in early access so I think we might have to kind of hold off on that for a little bit 100% Aceus it's basically talking about hey Crusader Kings is this type of game Total War is this type of game these are the these are the things that you'll look forward to when playing both so basically if you're playing Crusader Kings you're going to look forward to a true to form medieval court management game where you play as a ruler and push your way through those. Paris, no problem man, don't even worry about it. Thank you very much for that last minute two dollar donation. Whereas Total War is a turn based, not a real time like uh, the other one is, uh, a turn based game that is a grand battle strategy game. You are playing battles. That is the that is the focus point of Total War. And that is it's in the name. So, that'll pretty much be like the outline of the video. But right, guys, that concludes our stream here for today. We'll be streaming again tomorrow with that really cool multiplayer campaign. Then uh, two more times throughout the week to, to uh, finish off this campaign before starting our third one in a, uh, another one to be determined. We'll, we'll put it up on the channel and see what you guys want to do, and we'll go from there. But as always, thank you so much for watching here today. Have a good one, and take care. Shadow Khan, have a good one, dude. Thanks for jo joining as well. Richard Olson, thank you. Saraxis, thank you very much. Soul Snatch, have a good one as well. Danny White, thanks, brother. Aceus, have a good one. I'll talk to you on uh, the old Discord. Time to push the Turks out of Constantinople. <laughs> Pierce Brosnan, you crazy bastard. But all right, guys. Everyone have a good one. Wash your hands. Stay safe. Take care.